Do you ever find yourself yearning to look beyond the obvious and dreaming about what's possible in your next chapter? Welcome to the Next Chapter Experience. I'm your host, Jeanette Blissett, former corporate executive who turned the page to become a best-selling author, entrepreneur, designer, and lifestyle business consultant. Episodes feature me and a kaleidoscope of guests who share their journeys with wit, candor, and humor, breathing life into real talks about things that matter most. I believe we all have a fire burning within us, waiting to be unleashed and shared with the world. It may just be a matter of time. So let's get together, turn the page, and get this adventure started. So as you think about your journey over all these years and where you are right now, what's next for you? Like, what do you envision or what do you feel like you have to express that you haven't expressed yet as it relates to your work? Or is that just something that evolves? That's a great question. Definitely something that evolves. I want to continue expressing myself with my art, but I have so many wonderful ideas and projects that are art related. But I, I always tell myself, and even other, my art colleagues, I would say, don't ever get so comfortable. You might be in a great place and you're like, wow, I'm killing it. Oh, I'm doing this great art, but you're only as good as your last piece. So for me, I push the envelope and I start doing other things and the concrete has been great. It causes people to stop and think. It provides like a dialogue about it. And then I say, okay, well, what else can I do? How can I make this even better? How can I get to the next level? So I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly playing with different materials. During the spring and the summer, I work in the garage. I have all kinds of tools. And my dad, he's great. He buys me all these great little tools to work with. And he's amazed at some of the things that I come up with. So I don't want to limit myself to just that. I hope that people will say, wow, that is someone that used some type of material that I never even would have imagined that could be so beautiful. Um, Because when we think of cement and we think of concrete, we think of your traditional uses for it. But I've actually transformed Form that. And uh, I think that's really something to be proud of. So I can't even wait to see what I come up with next. Sure, I know it's going to be creative. I'd like to shift gears for a moment and talk about the art collective mm-hmm. that you're involved in. Share with us what that's about and why does it exist and why it's important? Yes. the Well, the first art collective that I started, I guess it was uh, back in, I want to say 2014 or 15. And it was started with a group of maybe 12 or 13 of us. And this gentleman, uh, and I, I love him to death, his name is Tony Radford. Uh, he's here in Indianapolis, and he always wanted to have a platform for Black artists to showcase their work. Come to find out that he was doing some research, and, and he had been keeping an eye on several artists. I was living in Atlanta for a number of years, moved back to Indianapolis around 2012, and that was during the time that I was trying to re-explore going back into visual arts and step away from the handbags. So it was important to me to learn the art scene here in Indianapolis. I was really nervous about it because you leave someplace like Atlanta or New York or LA, the culture is popping, the art scene's popping. You come to Indianapolis, you're like, okay. (laughs) So it was like pushing reset for me. And so I just started going to events and trying to meet other people, trying to find out like what is really going on here. So as I was watching these other people, Tony Rafford was watching me and he had gone on my website. And so I get this random email for a meeting and I show up and it's like 12 other artists there, people I didn't even know. And he's talking to us and he's saying, you know, I have a vision and I want to start a collective with the select few. I want to contribute towards the culture here and provide more platforms for Black artists. And Tony Radford started this art show called Meet the Artists. And it's every year, it's been 30 years strong at the Central Library. And it allows uh, for Black artists to showcase their work. After about 12 or 13 of the people that heard about Tony's vision, nine of us remain. It's either eight or nine of us. And we've been going strong for about six years. We started really working together on how to have a presence here in Indianapolis for Black artists and teaching them the ins and outs of um, doing exhibitions and properly presenting your work, selling yourself and branding yourself. So that's the first art collective that I'm a part of. It's called 
called We Are Indie Art. The second collective that I'm a part of is called The 18, which came about by doing the Black Lives Matter mural on Historic Indiana Avenue. And that was during the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. And that particular collective is is very special. Uh, We didn't intend to become a collective initially. There was a call that went out during the height of the movement and the protests. And I saw the call to do this mural in this, and I'm sure hundreds, if not thousands of artists signed up to do it. I was selected as one of the artists and I was given the letter L in black. And I had all these instructions and all I knew was supplies were going to be there and to show up on this particular day. And on that day, we made history by painting Black Lives Matter on Indiana Avenue. We decided to form as a collective. It was eight of us about a year later. So we're called the 18. Now, was there anything that happened as a result of that mural going up in terms of the community around that space or just in, in general? Yes, a, a lot of, I would say even before we did the mural, um, there were some people that really were advocating for it. And there were a lot of people who didn't want it to happen. It was just a lot of pushback. It, it was so tense during that time. And people were still under quarantine. The mass men mandate. People were angry. It was a lot of vandalism that was going on. The actual place that we were painting on the street, permits had to be done. Everything, all these things had to happen for us to be able to do this. So it was really important for the message that we had. And the 18 of us that that did the artwork, we were all on the same page because we said, look, we have something special to say. But what's interesting about our mural, it was free reign. We could put whatever message that we wanted in our letter. None Nothing was derogatory, nothing was disrespectful, but it was powerful what we wanted to say about the movement and racial injustice. I think the mural was beautiful when we finished, but I think what was even more powerful was not even a week later, someone defaced our mural. And I think we got more respect, we got more even notoriety. I think more people were even just concerned. A lot of people were hurting, the whole world was hurting. But when we physically saw that someone took the time. It was so disgusting for someone to do that. You know, all the hard work that we did and the message that we had and someone came and threw paint all over it. It was, it was heart-wrenching. Wow. Wow. So as you experienced that, you know, the 18 of you and what was the community support like and what was the actual outcome to resolve that? The community definitely was rooting for us. As a collective, we would have these Zoom conferences and we talked about it and we said, should we repaint it? Should we fix it up and polish it up? And then we came to the decision. We said, no, this is exactly why we did it. It shows there's hate. It shows that there's people out there that are very racist, the discrimination, the the anger that was behind it. Let's show and prove that we're not going to stop here. And this is just is proof that we need to continue to push this movement and to show that Black Lives Matter, we need to rally together as a unit to show these people that you're not going to stop our mission. It wasn't really about the mural per se. Some people kind of got wrapped up in that. They were just thinking like, oh, you guys are just painting on the street or whatever. It was bigger than that. And we proved that to be true. What Was there any response from the city officials? Absolutely. I was the first person to show up at the site when we found out, I think we found out around 3 a.m. that someone defaced it. So I got there like like 7 or 8 that morning and I went live and I, I believe CNN and a couple of other news networks used my live to speak about the story. So we were national news about this defacing and it, 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 we, we couldn't believe it. How many people, I mean, we were getting emails. I was getting messages in my inbox, just people supporting and we're so proud of what you guys did. The city of Indianapolis, we're like, we're not going to stand for this and we're going to make sure that we preserve it as long as we can. They even kept the road closed, I think an extra 30 days. And eventually we knew it was a major street. It is on Indian Avenue. Madam C.J. Walker sits right on the corner. So it's a prominent area. But what's interesting, I didn't even realize how many people hadn't even learned about Indiana Avenue or had visited Indiana Avenue or knew about the history and the music and the businesses, Black businesses, the Black musicians that used to perform on Indiana Avenue, the, the Walker Theater that's there. So it, it was bringing about awareness of history, but also introducing 
introducing history to people who had no idea about Indianapolis and the rich history that we do have here. But I just never put it all together. I've been down there and it is a very eclectic street, if you will, with businesses that seem to be very, very culturally diverse yes. from the standpoint of the, the market that they serve, the community that they serve. And that's one of the things I like about when I would go downtown and, and experience mm -hmm. um, some of the restaurants down there, some of the boutiques down there, the galleries down there, that type of thing, you know, but I didn't, it didn't click with me in terms of the historical importance. So and I, that's been gone for a while. I mean, it, it was thriving at some point and then just became just another street that people just would cut through there. We were, as far as the planning stages of doing the mural, I guess it was suggested maybe to do it in front of the Capitol building and all these other places. But for whatever reason that the permits and everything, um, as far as with the city to allow us to do it on Indiana, Indiana Avenue, um, I'm so glad that it happened that way because it brought more attention to the significance of that street. Now, as of today, and so we're almost two years out, that whole road is gone. And we're working now with um, the cultural trail um, to try to still preserve what we did in some way. But what was really nice was they gave all of us a portion of our letter. And it's beautiful, Jeanette. Like we had to pick them up. They cut it. They must have used some type of like water saw or something. And it's like a perfect cylinder of concrete. It's probably about five inches thick of a letter. I mean, you can, you can only see a portion of what you did, but they wanted to give us something tangible that we could have. And when I went, I mean, I was in tears just seeing it, but that's all that we have left. So now it's kind of working on the next stages of how we're going to continue to preserve. And luckily, Indianapolis has been great because they knew that the street was going to be gone. So the Children's Museum, they have a beautiful exhibit with the mural. We've had banners put up around the city. We've worked with different exhibitions to, to continue being able to show Indianapolis and the world for that matter, what 18 of us did uh, on that day. So as we pull things together, understanding what your journey was from the very beginning and then going on to middle school, moving on, of <laughs> course, high school must have been traumatic. <laughs> oh my God, yes. I'm still getting over that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to okay. college in North Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, spending some time in Atlanta, you know, and then back in Indianapolis. I remember when you when you went back home to mm -hmm. Indy. Now you've been there for a while and really, really feeling the opportunities and understanding where your place is in the greater scheme of things. And we've talked about what next chapter could look like to you as you continue to explore. And I, as our conversation has unfolded, I see great possibilities. Mm -hmm. However, it could be anything. It could be whatever you want it to be. And that's the Absolutely. beauty of next chapter, you get to actually create it and make it whatever you want it to be. And, and I love that. And I, I encourage a lot of people to use, you know, your life experiences to, to mold you into the next chapter. And one thing I can say, Indianapolis has really made me proud. And there was a time where I said, I never will go back to that place. I will say when I came back to Indianapolis over the past six years, how I've grown as a person, how I've grown as an artist, how I've connected with my community, how I've built relationships with the people in my community. I feel like Indianapolis loves me and I, I love Indianapolis back. And I can't wait to see what's next for Indianapolis. I think a lot of people are learning more about it. And I, they're noticing like, wow, there's a lot of creatives there. It's a lot of talented people right here in Indianapolis. So I'm hoping that we can be on the map too um, as an art hub. I, I really do. Well, I certainly do appreciate you giving to the city of Indianapolis. They say give, it should be given on to <laughs> tell you what, and flowing over. So you're doing great work. And again, I was so proud when I walked into the art center and I saw your work and Thank you. I was just really thrilled for you. So I would say just continue to do what you're doing and continue to explore and discover new ways of expressing yourself because it's greatly appreciated and greatly needed. So thanks so much for taking the time to be a guest on the Next Chapter Experience podcast. Thank you so much for um, having me and um, I look forward to um, introducing my work. I have a lot of great things coming up and if I can mention a few shows that I have going on here in Indianapolis, I'll be exhibiting at Saks Fifth Avenue in February. I will also be doing Meet the Artists. Again, I think this will be my fourth or fifth year. I always support Meet the Artist. That's at the Central Library here in Indianapolis, which is also in February. I also have a solo show at Lafayette Museum of Art. That's right next to Purdue. And that will be uh, coming down at the
the end of February. So if you can go check that out. And going into the spring and the summer, I usually do a lot of commissions with the Arts Council of Indianapolis. Some murals are coming up. So stay tuned. I have a lot in store for Indianapolis. Fantastic. Well, again, <laughs> very, very much appreciated. And thanks so much. Rebecca's information will be included in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Next Chapter Experience. If you have already subscribed, rated, and left a review, or shared this podcast with a friend, many, many thanks. For questions, comments, or feedback, reach out to me at Jeanette Lissette at nextchapterexperience.com. We'll be back with more conversations, so until then, keep that fire burning.